Hi guys, Mr. Awful Waffles here. This is going to be your no-nonsense ultimate guide to build and upgrade the Ice Staff in Origins. We'll start off with a little bit of gameplay of the non-upgraded version of the Staff. When you fire it, it shoots out an icy bolt that will slow down zombies when it hits them, slowly freezing them over time and potentially killing them as well. If you think back to the Winter's Howl Wonder Weapon from maps like Five and Verrooked, it's quite similar to that, but unfortunately, in its unupgraded form, it kind of pales in comparison to the other staves in terms of zombie killing and panzer killing and horde escape. It's not the best. However, when you upgrade it, as you'll see at the end of the video, that changes big time. Here's a quick overview of the steps we're going to be covering in this guide. For the regular staff, we're going to collect the gramophone and the associated records. We'll also be collecting three staff fragments and the gem for the staff, and then we'll be able to craft it. And once that's done, we can get working on the upgraded staff steps, which are to complete the ice puzzle in the crazy place, then destroy the ancient tombstones around the map, at which point we'll be able to align the 115 amplification rings and ultimately start charging the staff in order to finish the upgrade process. To get started, we need to collect several different objects, and two of them, the gramophone and black record, are actually shared across all of the staffs. The gramophone can be found in the top area of the mound to either the left or the right of this wooden table. Once you've grabbed that, come out of the mound and check the following three locations for the black record. One spawn is in a wheelbarrow on top of the mound itself. Another spawn is just around a corner from that first spawn, actually, on the wooden walkway just behind this sign. And the final spawn is actually round the back of the mound nearby the path that goes towards the church. Once you've got those two items, you'll be able to place them down on the table that you originally collected the gramophone at and the chamber below you will open. And please remember, it's good zombies etiquette to pick your gramophone back up once you're done using it. Seeing as we're building the ice staff, we also need to pick up the blue record, which is going to be located in the tank station. There are again three spawns, one of which is on the table directly in front of you as you enter the tank station from the front. Another is on the shelf just next to the mystery box, kind of illuminated there. And the third is on another shelf just next to the stone slab desk by the exit of the tank station around the back. Now, with the gramophone, black, and blue records collected, come to the tunnel behind the church on the way to Generator 6. At the bottom, chuck the gramophone down on the table, and a portal will open up to the crazy place. Go through, and you have to do it via this portal for the ice staff, and make your way over to the newly opened ice altar. You should see that there's a glowing blue gem inside, which you need to pick up. The final three pieces we need to collect are all staff fragments, and they are all actually found the same way. You're going to need to find a shovel, which I'll show you locations for in just a moment, and start digging up the various dig sites that spawn in each round around the map. However, it has to be snowing while you do this, so if the sky is clear or it's raining, for example, you need to go another round into your game, see if the weather changes, and once you get snow, that's when you want to start digging things up, because you won't be able to get the parts otherwise. In order to dig, you obviously need shovels, and I'll show you some spawn locations for those now, and then in a moment, I'll give you a bit of a shortcut so you can find your staff fragments a little bit more easily. There are always two shovel spawns in the spawn area of the map, one of which is literally in the room that you start the game in, on the right-hand side. The other is up the stairs and directly across from you in the exit from the spawn on the left-hand side there. There are other locations that you can check for shovels as well, but you've got to bear in mind that these other ones, i.e. the non-spawn ones, change location each game. A couple of good places to check are the tunnels on the map that lead to the crazy place, and also inside the downstairs area of the church next to the buildables bench or against the pillar, those sorts of places. I'll have a full comprehensive list in the description down below so you can check for more shovel locations if you happen to need one. Now then, the quick tip that I mentioned to speed up your search for the staff fragments is as follows. You'll notice that in your HUD there are three parts to each staff, a top, middle, and a bottom. Each of those parts is more likely to spawn in a corresponding area of the map itself, so 
The top part, for example, is more likely to be in the church area or around Generator 6 in one of those dig sites. Then the middle part will be somewhere above the workshop, but beneath the path towards the church part of the map. So essentially that's the middle section of Origins. And finally, the bottom part will be somewhere from the spawn leading up to the workshop. So if you're having some trouble finding that last star fragment during a snow round, look at which fragment it is, figure out the corresponding map area, and then start digging there because you're more likely to find it that way. I've got to quickly say thank you to my buddy Lex for telling me about this strategy. Once you've found the items I previously mentioned in this video, and you've now dug up those three fragments, you're ready to craft your staff. So go down to the very bottom of the mound and you'll see four pedestals, each of which correspond to one of the elemental staffs. Go over to the blue one and get crafting. Remember, by the way, that you're not going to be able to pick up two elemental staffs at once. Congratulations, you got your staff. Now let's get to work upgrading it. Using your gramophone, return to the crazy place and bring your ice staff with you. We're going to do the ice puzzle now, and it's very simple as long as you follow along what I'm doing on screen. In the ice area of the crazy place, there are two things you need to pay attention to. One is the pillar, which has a symbol on it, and the other is the row of tiles floating above your head. What we have to do is look at the symbol on the pillar figure out which of the tiles it corresponds to, and then shoot that tile with the ice staff. Then the pillar symbol will change and we rinse and repeat. In order to tell which symbol on the pillar corresponds to which floating tile, I've created this image which is on screen now and also available on Cronorium.com, my zombies website. So if you ever want to check back on this image, you can find it there. It's linked in the description down below. So just to be clear, look at the symbol that is on the pillar, then look at my image, see which tile that symbol corresponds to, and then shoot that tile. Then look back at the pillar and do the same again until all of the tiles have been turned over. If you mess up, it's going to reset all of the tiles, so take your time with this and you should be okay. Once that's finished up, you're going to need to return from the crazy place with your staff and find three tombstones. Each of them needs to be frozen with your staff and then shot with a bullet-based weapon but I would avoid using the Boom Hilda. The three tombstone locations are as follows. If you come to Generator 4 and find the soul chest inside one of the robot's footprints behind Juggernog, you should see one of the tombstones on the ledge behind you. From there, if you turn towards the mound and run towards it, you'll enter one of the giant's footprints, and there's a tombstone just in front of you on the wooden ledge in front of the mound. The final one is a little bit of a run away. If you go out of the back of the tank station, you should be able to see a downed robot, and its twitching hand should be right next to the final tombstone. Once you have frozen and destroyed those three tombstones, go back to the mound and head down the stairs. There are several levers in this area that you can use to rotate the 115 amplification rings. What you need to do is rotate those rings such that all of the lights on the sides of the rings go blue. Simply rotate a ring if it's the wrong color until it goes blue, then start rotating the next one, and once they're all blue, go right down to the bottom of that area and shoot the blue orb that should be floating inside the middle of the rings with your ice staff. The ball's gonna fly off into the air and actually end up in the crazy place, so get your gramophone and head on after it. This final part of the upgrade process requires you to charge your staff by killing zombies in the crazy place while you're staff is resting in its holder. Very similar to the end of Der Eisendracher's bow upgrades where you have to charge your bow. So once you're in the crazy place and you're ready to get this kicked off, put your staff into the altar where you picked your gem up earlier in your game and start killing zombies. A pro tip for this is that you can actually kill zombies in any area of the crazy place. It doesn't just have to be the middle or anything like that. The souls will still travel to your holder, so if you feel safer camping near one of the teleporters or something like that, then feel free to do so. Also, another tip for those of you that know how to upgrade the fire staff, or if you don't know, there's a guide on my channel, is that you can get the kills you need for the cauldrons in here while you're getting kills for your staff. So 
the souls will go into the staff and the dead zombies will fill the cauldrons at the same time. Once you've killed enough zombies, you should see a pop-up on the top left-hand corner of your screen saying that the staff is complete, essentially. It'll be a white glow around the outline of the staff. And in your inventory, if you bring it up with your middle button on your controller, you should be able to see that it's done as well. You can go over to it, pick it up, assuming you don't already have a staff in your hand, and voila, you've gained access to Ul's Arrow. As usual with the upgraded staves, this comes with some extra benefits. For example, you get a new melee attack in the form of a knife on the end of the staff, and you get access to Sekhmet's Vigor, which allows you to revive teammates from a distance using the back end of the staff, and that's accessed via the D-pad. The main attraction, though, has got to be the charged shot that you can do with the staff that takes a bit more ammo, but also kills a lot more zombies. It's going to create a kind of mini snowstorm in front of you. I think that's the idea, like some kind of tornado, and essentially... Anything that runs through there is pretty likely to die. It'll also slow panzers down as well, which is a nice bonus. Overall, this takes the staff from being kind of meh before it's upgraded to pretty damn good because it's got so much killing potential with that charged shot that it's just hard to turn down, really. And the great thing about this thing is that that's not all. There are still more things you can do with the ice staff that you cannot do with the other three elemental staffs. For example... There are three burning wooden carts, or chariots, or whatever you want to call them, dotted around the mound. One is in front of the mound, just here. One is opposite the MP40, and a third can be found just around the corner towards where Stamina Up is. If, in a given round, you shoot those three carts and extinguish the fire using the Ice Staff, you'll actually guarantee yourself a free drop, a free power-up, on top of the mound. So, extinguish all three, run up to the top of the mound, and you should have a zombie blood waiting for you. You can do this every single round as well, so this is a really useful one if you're doing the main quest easter egg. In terms of comparison to the other staffs, I would say that the Ice Staff is weaker probably before you upgrade it, just because it's not so great for getting kills and isn't very useful for the Panzers either, but once you upgrade this bad boy, that Whirlwind Charged Shot just completely justifies all the effort you put in. The question is, do you agree? Let me know what your favourite staff is down below in a comment, and consider subscribing for more crystal clear guides just like this one. In fact, on the screen right now, I'm going to have links to my three other Origins staff guides and my main Origins Easter egg guide, so feel free to click on over to any of those, and I'm sure you'll enjoy them just as much as you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.